Moses has been called out yet again. Things aren't looking good at the bank of Trisha Paytas. It's only a matter of time before he cashes out. Their fifth holiday honeymoon has come to an end and it's going to be a harsh reality for them because they're soon going to start to realise they can't just manifest money in the form of lotto tickets and that a $50,000 a night hotel suite and $30,000 a plane ticket first class Emirates flight is going to be much regretted in the next coming months. The OF, the YouTube AdSense, the sponsorships, it's all deteriorating rapidly. Things are not looking good at all. And don't be fooled, Trisha is arguing with fans already about how she chooses to spend her money. So people are giving up on even trying to inform her of her bad decisions at this point because she just won't listen. Even her diehard fans that have stuck around by her side even until this point are beginning to worry about what the future may hold. On the daily, we are discovering more harsh truths about Moses and Trisha is completely disregarding any and all information that's coming forward. Trisha can no longer come for Ethan either because he has the upper hand and he can just confront her about Moses' allegations anytime he wants and she doesn't want to spiral into another breakdown online again. So at this point Trisha is just focusing on herself and ignoring Moses' relatives which are now her relatives too. Ethan and Hela Klein recently had their gorgeous baby and Trisha has yet to congratulate them, which speaks volumes. So Moses' ex-girlfriend has been responding to Reddit comments as of very recently. She's bringing to light more and more tea, and she recently went off yet again. Someone had said Moses was not well respected. Every achievement he had career-wise was thanks to his first wife. She is very, very hardworking and educated. From what I've researched, the only projects or displays he's had are ones that she was the organiser for. Catnips, who is Moses' ex, had responded at bingo along with his friend Morley, and his architect jobs were also brought to him by his mentor. Strangely, he had women bringing him money slash jobs, I see. Parasite. Someone had also said, right? And literally everyone talks about how generous Ethan and Hela are. I'm sure they gave him more than he ever deserved. He's so jealous of Hela and anyone with actual talent. Catnips responded, they've given him so many jobs not in front of the cameras, and he wasn't satisfied with that. They paid him to literally do everything in their house and their custom couches. One of which were just effing pillows stacked on top of itself in Barney colours. When he kept showing me and also yelling at the workers for arranging it incorrectly, he was throwing a fit on the phone. Maybe your design should have made more sense. They're literally clown coloured pillows you have to stack to sit on. Someone else had said, so much cringe. Did you know that he and Trisha Paytas have a weirdo plan to get him a role on the new Zohan production? I think that's why they made the Trisha talk stuff. So he had a body of work more recent than Young Jesus. If you wouldn't mind me asking, Asking, did he ever talk about the whole Jesus thing slash modelling as Jesus? It's one of the more creepier red flags of his that I've noticed. A facade of innocence and holiness is a good tool. Yes, oh my god, I know a lot of you have dug up that Jesus perfume sketch video, pics of him as Jesus, etc. He would not shut up about his glory days as Jesus. He's so narcissistic that he literally somewhat believes he's Jesus, I think. He also said he's been approached so many times for poor because he looks like Jesus and that he'd make so much money. And I left another comment similar to your second statement. He absolutely used it as a tool. He created this innocent, almost sentient, childlike Jesus boy facade so that you couldn't dislike, be upset, or think of him as a negative figure because he speaks in a weird whisper when he's acting and says he doesn't know how to hate because he has become water. So if you only saw his image and told someone, oh yeah, water boy is nuts, they wouldn't believe you. Same way every story he told me about other girls slash women, they came on to him, they tricked him, they blah blah blah. Nothing is ever his fault, and the women are tricksters and liars. Oh yeah, in hindsight it's really creepy, and it's really scary seeing these videos of him talking about certain things, like he's talking about it for the first time, and how he takes on pauses like he's thinking. He said the same stories to me with the same pauses. I think he's literally only his authentic self when he's taking selfies and taking b shots. Whatever he's showing is not real. His mask started to slip for me. I had no idea though about all the lies even then. In terms of being this wholly perfect non man, when I saw how he was behaving and acting when he all of a sudden said he needed to get on a phone call with a young woman who I think was in college, young, I met her at a Christmas party along with her parents etc, who was the child of his friends, who treat him as family and has employed him many times, who are famous and consider him as an uncle. And he was having a weird conversation with her and maybe she didn't take it that way, but he was trying to convince her to distance and separate from her parents, who are his friends and employers. Also how toxic parents 
frequencies are and they will not change or understand the greater frequency that they, him and the young lady, operate on, etc, etc. I don't think at the first 30 minutes of the phone call that I had to sit through in the car that he was just calming down a young lady in crisis, but I don't know. That's all I'm going to say. I felt that his relationship towards her was not an appropriate one. I got the worst gut feelings. And that's also when he started acting weird. Hmm, as I'm typing this, I wonder if it was truly her or if it was another 24-year-old he was conning. Who knows? He told and lived so many lies that I don't even know if he lied to me that that was their daughter on the phone or perhaps the secret lover that he told me was the daughter but actually wasn't. Apologies on this being a long-winded and disorganised comment. I'm typing this frantically on my phone. And now people are actually starting to feel bad for Trisha as more people realise just how manipulative Moses is. Someone recently posted a thread on Reddit explaining how they felt sympathetic towards Trisha and it got a lot of attention. I think Trisha Paytas is an asshole, especially recently being exposed for a lot of disgusting behaviour. She is narcissistic and extremely superficial. She also lies chronically. I have always found her to be extremely entertaining and definitely funny. I loved her banter with Jeffree Star. It's funny to watch two characters hanging out in a pink Lambo and going to Taco Bell, you know? You could catch me watching her vlogs and mukbangs while doing homework. Then the crying on the floor video started coming out after her breakup with Jason and I don't know, it changed how I view her content because I felt sad for her. Sure, it's superficial and weird to overshare for profit to strangers but that's what she does and regardless I have empathy for her feelings. So it's obvious and confirmed by her herself that she is severely mentally ill. She clearly went through a real crisis when she ran her car into Jason's house. She is reactionary and on defence 24-7 and constantly offending people. She's literally off the rails. She meets Ethan and she cries on camera after he validates the image she put out, attracting bad people. I think she felt connected and understood. This woman is absolutely begging for a real human connection, but she is terrified of it because it requires vulnerability. She overshares and purposefully paints herself in a bad light. Dude, she is begging for help. Cue frenemies. Trisha would overshare the worst parts of herself with Ethan and be disgusted and inappropriate towards him. He still called her his friend. The first episodes were so damn amazing and fun to watch. Who doesn't love a fabulous redemption arc? And then who came along? Mortar Boy gets mad when his sister and brother-in-law kick him off the H3 Bachelor for Trisha to do Bachelorette. This is super upsetting to him because that was his chance for them to finally plug his awesome YouTube channel. He's also big mad because his little sister is really successful and he's a broke loser. So anyway, he sabotages the segment by sleeping with her and then he out when they ask him about it. Well, you will know what happens next. Aquaman worms his way into a mentally ill woman's life because she is severely mentally ill without any therapy or suitable support systems. She is not capable of achieving a relationship that isn't obsessive and self-consuming. Connection starved so much, she'll throw her whole bank account at him. Yeah, no shit. He drops his whole family to be with a severely mentally ill millionaire. This guy is a loser. And he's also very stupid because he really didn't factor in the ending of Frenemies being the end of her big bag. He thought it would blow over and they'd be back to it. He's so stupid because she was so receptive to how he felt about his family that she internalised it and overshared and that tore them apart. And I blame him. Look, I know that being mentally ill isn't an excuse for poor behaviour. She deserves to be held accountable for all the shitty things she's done. But she's a chronically depressed, anxiety-ridden and lonely person who never received successful professional help. So yeah, material girl Moses is really out here spinning up Trisha's last coins and and she's definitely going into debt if she hasn't already. Now lastly, something I wanted to bring to light, obviously Trisha is well known for her cultural appropriation and being disrespectful towards many cultures, including the Jewish culture. Well, a rabbi actually weighed in on the whole Trisha situation on TikTok recently, and it was actually quite shocking what she had to say. We need to talk about this. There are two problems with this statement made by this content creator. Number one, Conversion is a serious commitment. It requires a great deal of time and effort and thought, and you don't just pay for it. Secondly, all this does is reinforce that age old anti Semitic canard that there is this odd relationship between Jews and money. We control all the money, we have all the money, we can be paid off with money, and all of that. So please, please leave us alone. 
if you really respect Jews, you'll listen to us. So what are your thoughts on all this Moses and Trisha drama? Let me know in the comments.